Hi, my name is Brian Ford. I'm the Paramedic Program Director at Yavapai College. And what you're listening to right now is the Clinical Preceptor Training for the Paramedic Program 2011-2012. I'd like to first start by just saying thank you to the different agencies that are willing to precept our students. This is a great opportunity for our students. We really appreciate you taking this opportunity and playing such an active role in their education and development as paramedics. We realize that your time is extremely valuable. It's our hope that our students can be proactive members of your team, be able to help you out with your tasks while at the same time completing what is required of them. We ask that you be just a little patient with our students. You may recall being a student in the past, how intimidating and overwhelming it can be, especially being in the EMS field. And so any type of patience that you could show to them would be much appreciated. Please know that whenever the students are coming to you that they will have completed at least 90 percent of their national standard curriculum. So what this means is they've got a really solid foundation of the paramedic curriculum including anatomy and physiology, medications, pharmacology, and pathology. They've also completed various skills programs including CPR, healthcare provider, ACLS, PALS, PHTLS. They are all current EMT basics at this point and they are certified all of their immunizations are up to date and any required background checks have been completed. Also, if there is any specific orientation requirements that your agency has, the students will have completed them prior to coming to you. Before any of the students come to you, they've been advised that the purpose of the clinical preceptorship is really for the development of their practice as a paramedic. When they come to you, we expect them to be professional, to be courteous, to maintain a professional behavior and uphold the standards of your agency. We want them to be extremely self-directed and to look for ways to be proactive in their education. We want them to be able to communicate effectively with the different healthcare professionals that they're going to be running into. And more importantly, we also want them to be able to solicit feedback based on their performance. So what we're asking you as the preceptor is to make sure that you're paying accurate attention to what they're doing, you're helping them with their skills and assessment techniques, and then giving them the proper feedback so that they can grow and develop as a paramedic. The three major areas where the students are going to be focusing on are the hours, there's going to be specific skills, and then also they're going to be focused on getting assessments in a variety of different age groups, different complaints, and pathologies. Each student has required hours in each of the following areas, the ER, the ICU, labor and delivery, PEDS, ICU or ED, respiratory, and psych. As far as the pathologies, Again, there's a variety of different patients that they need to complete assessments on. As you can see here, there's it's outlined the different patient populations. It will be up to the student to document this correctly and to determine exactly where the patient falls, whether it's a cardiac patient, obstetrics, trauma. Some of them obviously are going to be very apparent, but other ones it's up to the student's discretion to kind of get them in the right category. As the preceptor, what we're looking for is you to verify and observe that they've actually done these assessments and then document that. For the different patient complaints, there is a variety of different areas that the students will need to focus on and complete, including chest pain, respiratory distress, syncable episodes, any type of abdominal complaint, and altered mental status. Again, these are just kind of broad categories. We realize that some of the patients might not fall exactly into these specific categories. It's for the students to determine how best to document them for their requirements. And we also realize that it's not just going to be limited to this. And that's part of the exciting portion about being in a clinical setting is you never know what you're going to get and the students are going to learn much more beyond what they're expected to as far as the requirements of the course. When they show up to you, we will have addressed 
what it means to be a professional in the clinical setting. They will be dressed appropriately for whatever setting they're in. Uh, a proper ID, whether it's the Yavapai College one or an agency required one. They will look professional. We've talked to them about no excessive jewelry, making sure any tattoos and any other rings is covered up, and that students are coming there prepared to go to work. They're there to be an employee, if you will, for the day in your particular setting. So they will have trauma shears, pen lights, different documentation papers, so that they are ready to go and to do their job effectively. As a preceptor, we're hoping that you're going to be able to comment on how they show up to you, if they're professionally groomed, if they're prepared, if they're ready to, to go to work, and if there's any issues, obviously, you will have contact information so we can address that before they're actually able to see any patients. The documentation paperwork that the students will be expected to complete for each of the different clinical settings that they're in, we're asking that the preceptors sign for all of the skills and documented times that they're there. We realize that um, you know your time is valuable, so we've really streamlined the process where it should be pretty easy and straightforward for you to document it. The onus is on the students to complete this paperwork. What they're really looking for you as the preceptor is just to verify and validate that they've actually completed this stuff. They will show up with a variety of different documentation forms and they'll be able to go over that with you prior to the beginning of their shift. This slide shows some of the documentation paperwork that they will turn into the Yavapai College instructors. So we've kind of talked a little bit about what the expectation of the students are when they show up to you. We've talked a little bit about what uh, we're hoping or asking you as the preceptor to do when our students are there. So let me just address kind of what's going to happen after the end of the rotation. We hope that you'll be able to have time to actually review the clinical experience with them, to give them that feedback that they really need based on their performance. Again, we hope that you're able to document and validate any and all skills and assessments that they've done. We would hope that you'd be able to fill out a brief student evaluation and make sure that before they leave that any of the paperwork that they're taking with you that you've signed off on doesn't have any sensitive patient information or HIPAA violations. We will have covered this extensively in the classroom making sure that they're documenting thoroughly but they're also doing it with HIPAA compliance. So at the end of the shift, if you've got a few minutes, you know our students most certainly will welcome any and all feedback that you have. And that's really when the growth and the learning will take place is they've been doing the skills, they've been observed by you throughout the experience, and now is the time where you can have a little debriefing with them and give them that specific feedback that you haven't already addressed throughout the day. And that's about it. If there's any other concerns, you can contact the college directly. The students will have contact numbers with them. But again, we just want to say thank you. This is a real privilege for us. We appreciate the relationships we've developed with the different clinical sites. And we really look forward to our students having a really positive, meaningful educational experience. If there's anything that we can do to further prepare our students, just please let us know. And other than that, we want to say thanks again.